Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do Bleach Chapter 511 review. This week's chapter of Bleach. This. This week's chapter of Bleach was an amazing chapter of Bleach. For my personal opinion, this chapter is amazing. From a storytelling standpoint, from a structure standpoint, this chapter is amazing. It is an overall amazing chapter of Bleach. I mean, I never expected Yamamoto to die the way he did and then have his body completely abused. There's just the word here is abused by Yuha. And it was like, oh. Like, oh, you fiend. Like, it, uh, uh, uh. He's so fiendish. He's so evil. And I love it. I fucking love it. I love it to the max. Why is that? Because the sense of danger around the character Yuha Bak is so high. I mean, I have never seen a Bleach character emit such a high level and sense of danger this guy not only is he smart not only is he smart but he's ruthless and on top of that very powerful very powerful the thing here is that the shinigami the hollow the full bringers the visors all these guys are looking like scrubs compared to the quincy compared to the star knights i mean one of their like one of their star knights Kyrie was able to imprison Ichigo in a fucking jail for the longest. And I'm assuming that he got out. Because we see an explosion in the sky. And I'm going to assume it's Ichigo. And maybe teamed up with the team that with either Uehara or with the uh with the person that the, with the person that we don't know who is just yet. So I'm going to assume Grimjo, because I want to be Grimjo. I really do. But um but but these Quincy's, these Star Knights are are extremely fucking powerful. I mean, remember this: when Uryu went to his final form in the in the Soul Society arc, his uh, list is still form. He absolutely obliterated Myri, a captain level Shinigami. He obliterated him in two attacks. These these Quincy, yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I yo. When it comes to the uh, special humans like full bringers and 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 bounce and whatever, the Quincy are the strongest by far, by far. This is not even funny. I mean, like holy, I, these guys are amazing. They are amazing. I love them. And their leader Yuha, he is my nigga. <laughs> he is my nigga. One hundred percent. And I love it. I mean, Aizen, Aizen was all talk. He was all talk. His five-page monologues, all talk. But Yuha, action before words. Actions speak louder than words. And yes, they do. Yes, they do indeed. I mean, and like you can see where the chapter is going from the front cover page, the color page. And it was so sad, cause you see Yamamoto, and he has this like, really sad face on, and then you see half his body just like gone, like and the bottom color page on the bottom right hand corner, you can see like his blood and like his, and like half his body being cut, severed, and it's a huge shock. So this chapter, from a structure standpoint, from a from a storytelling standpoint, and from my own, and from my own personal opinion. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Taite Kubo. Bleach is back. Bleach. It's back. It's, it's back. And I would gesture to say. It's better than ever. I mean yeah. I was going to wait for a while. In order to say that. But this chapter just really hit home. It, it really hit home. It, right in the gut. Right in the gut. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When I saw Yamamoto, 
just lying there and like that face, that face he had, that that glazed over sad face, like like that feeling in my gut, man, like like I was gonna cry or something. I was like, damn, you know, I was like, damn. And then Yuha, just stomping on his fucking head, cutting his arm off, and then completely obliterating his body with a ray of arrows. Wow. And then to find out that he knows that the Zero Squad is coming and he's preparing for the Zero Squad. I mean, my, go my goodness, my goodness. Oh, man. Wow. Quinn sees for the motherfucking win. I said it back then. I'll say it now. Quinn sees for the motherfucking win. So let me do the actual summary, all right? Because, again, this chapter is just, it's, it's, wow. One of the best chapters, if not the best chapter in this arc and maybe in the entire series. Maybe. I mean, I need to think about it. Because Bleach has some really good chapters, but this one, wow. <sighs> Okay, so this chapter starts off, and once again, the color page, very good, very vibrant, and then we see Yamamoto, and that severed body, oh man, wow, oh man, it was crazy shit. And what happens here, the chapter starts off, and then we get like a little flashback scene of uh, uh, Shun Sui when he's a kid, and he's looking at a painting, or this picture, or he painted a painting, whatever it is. And this painting is, us, is and this painting is us some creature that apparently rampaged society like a few years back, and it looks like a fire being, a fire demon of some kind. And Yamamoto, I guess, is that representation of that same fire entity. And then we see that panel again. Yo, this panel, it's my thumbnail. I love it. I love it because it's so sad, so monumental. We see Yamamoto, that glazed over face, man. Like he's like he's so sad. Like like his dead eyes. And then you see the next page. His body is standing. His legs are standing. But his torso sliced in two. And his upper half is falling down. So what happens here is that we get a few scenes of Kyoraku, and uh Kyoraku is he has sensed the disappearance of Yamamoto's Ryatsu, and he's worried. But he, but he, he gets distracted. So what happens here is that he yells old man. But as he yells but as he yells old man, the Quincy with the glasses, I mean people are calling him the Colonel Sanders Quincy. I can see why. But the thing here is that the guy with the glasses, the starting with the starting with the glasses, he shoots two arrows in Kyaku's gut. So now we know that Kyaku is injured and he's losing the fight. Which actually hints at Kyaku maybe going Bankai. Because he has now sensed Yamoto has, you know, he, he's, you know, died. Or is near death at this point in time. No, 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 he's dead. He's dead, right? So he knows that Yamoto is now dead. So Kyoraku may feel the need to use his Bankai and try and end the fight with the Glasses Quincy and then help off the others in their fight. I mean, probably, I mean, at this point in time, that is a good possibility. And what happens here is that we go back to Yuha. And Yuha... He is walking away from Yamamoto. And he says to the one guy, the guy who the guy who's watching the fight between uh Royt and Yamamoto, he says, uh, Hashvald, we're leaving. And that so that lets me know that this guy has a name and his name is Hashvald. So what happens here is that Yamamoto so what happens here is that uh Yuha walks away, and as he's walking away, Yamamoto, who is presumed to be dead grabs the leg of Yuha, but Yuha, like that, cuts his arm off, the arm that was holding the Zanpacho. Wow. Face palm. Yo, this guy's evil. But then he ups the ante, and he decides to say meaningless, and he steps on Yamamoto's skull. I mean, yo, that's what I'm talking about, man. The brutality, the ruthlessness, the sense of danger surrounding this character is immense. It is so fucking high. And I like it. I really do like it. What happens here? He steps on Yamo's head. And he says two main things. The first thing is that uh, Yamoto never accepted help from humans. 
which made him weak. Because apparently he was talking about how um how he never accepted help from or he may even though or he may could have healed his left arm, he never accepted that. Because I guess the way it is that Shinigami are guarded with the task of protecting the soul society and the human world. And if the head commander is accepting help from a human girl, then I guess, you know, that would diminish his status as the first division commander, maybe. I mean, I don't know. But or you know, it's it's probably it's probably a simple pride thing. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. But um and and that's also the reason why Yamamoto never really acknowledged Ichigo, never really helped out Ichigo in any way, shape, or form. Cause he's cause because Ichigo is a human. And again, Shinigami protecting humans and yada yada yada. And what happens here is that Yuha mentions also another thing. And he states that apparently back in the day, back in the day, before the Shinigami destroyed the Quincy's 200 years ago, what happened was Old Man Yama and his boys were fucking monsters. Like, 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 like they were bees, they were monsters. They were known as divisions. And they would they, they were true demons. And they would cut you down mercilessly with no with with, with a no uh, hesitation. But what happened is that once they beat the Quincy's, there was a time of peace. There was an era of peace. And so this lets me know that the Quincy, uh, you know, like the the uh, Quincy massacre actually took some time to get through. Like it didn't happen in, like one day. It may have taken a few years, but not in like one day. Like I'm gonna just for a few years of this Quincy massacre that actually occurred in that point in time. But after that, what happened was there was an era of peace, and Yamamoto got soft in the era of peace, and. That's what happened. That's what made him weak. Number one, the fact that he considered himself to be on a higher scale than the humans that could have, you know, helped him out. And number two is the fact that he, over the course of this peaceful era, got really soft. And Yama and, and Yuha enforces this statement by shooting all these arrows into Yamamoto and like completely, I'm going to assume that Yamamoto, his main body right now is pretty much disintegrated or gone, obliterated, whatever. He is officially dead. There is no fucking way. There is absolutely no way Yamamoto is coming back from that shit. He is dead. He is, he, he's dead. He's dead. He, it's gone. Yamamoto is dead. And what happens here is that at this point in time, everyone feels this shit like, uh, you know, um, um, Hitsugaya, Hiroko Shinji, everyone feels this shit. And then all of a sudden, Yuan says it's over. Reduce Soul Society to rubble. And then the Star Knights, at the same fucking time, put their hands on the ground. This big ass black hole appears. And then the like soldiers come forth. And then all of these soldiers. And this was a straight up Blitzkrieg. Like, like this is the same notion from the German Blitzkrieg. Because in the German Blitzkrieg, they would first send in their main airplanes and their main fighter pilots, and then they would bomb the shit out of the city. And then the soldiers come in after. It's the same notion. Yuha has sent in his top guys, his Star Knights, to dwindle down the forces of the Shinigami, and then he sent in the soldiers. It's the same notion as the German Blitzkrieg. I respect that shit. I really do. The soldiers come in. They are completely... Fucking up the entire city. I mean, it's not even funny. They are killing mad Shinigami. Mad Shinigami. There is fucking fire everywhere. And what I noticed here is that amongst some of the soldiers, the Quincy with the Mohawk is still alive. Even though he got burned by Yamamoto, he's still alive. Which lets me know that maybe Astronaut's alive too. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, like, this guy's alive. He's alive. So why not Astronaut? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. So what happens here, and this is awesome, all right? Yuha is watching the city, like, you know, he's watching all of society being, like, you know, taken down by his troops and shit. And then what happens is that he's leaving. And then he states that now that Yamamoto is gone, now that Yamamoto is gone, the Zero Squad is going to appear. Finally! Yes, 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 yes. I've been waiting to see these motherfuckers come in 
we are now getting confirmation from the main villain that they're going to come in and do some damage. And I have been waiting for that shit forever. Forever. And then he says, let's, re let's retreat and wait for them. Smart shit. Why is that smart? Because they don't know who they're fucking with. It's that simple. They don't know the abilities or the powers of the Zero Squad. And thus they're going to retreat and come back later. And then uh, analyze them then. Which makes fucking sense. Or analyze them from afar. But whatever. Either way. Smart shit. But as he's turning around. Explosion in the sky. Some random explosion. He's like what's that? And again I'm assuming that Ichigo has cut through the Sekai Gate and is now in the Soul Society alongside with his uh, assistants, which I'm assuming at this point in time is going to be Urahara and Grimdrow, I'm assuming. So that being said, overall, this chapter of Bleach, again, amazing, amazing, amazing. Loved it. Fucking loved it. And I will see you guys later. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe as always. And I'm signing out. Peace. Have a nice day.